is the Rugby Muscle Podcast, talking all that you need to become the best rugby player you can be. Now here are the Rugby Muscle Coaches, TJ and Alex. Jungle, 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 baby. Might wear well, your motherfucking drums, you know what I'm saying? I appreciate the love at all times, I promise you. I feel special. I feel special. Look at my wrist, fingers, ears. Look at my neck glow. I feel special. I feel special. Check out my bitch. Check out my peers. Keep them extra. All right, here we go, boys. That was a different song for the opening tune for the podcast, eh, Alex? Yeah, I was hoping for the specials, mate, but, you know. They, I can't find them on um, Spotify, so that's unfortunate. The- you can't find the specials. On sp- okay, cool. Sorry, mate. They, Sorry that no one, no one has the same, what do you say, the same taste in music niche, as you do? The same niche taste, yeah. yeah. Anyway, that was a special request because we are going to be talking about special exercises or special strength work that you can do as a rugby player. By the way, I'm TJ and I'm joined by Alex. Yo. And we are back with another Robbie Muscle podcast. And before we get going, as always, Alex needs to give us the facts of the week. It's time for the facts of the week. Go ahead. I'm quite a big dog man. That makes sense. I quite like dogs. Yeah. Um, and you know, I've got a big dog. So my, my dog was quite, quite a big one. But the most expensive dog ever brought was uh, $1.6 million. One point six million dollars for a dog. For yeah. Um, Bonkers, right, let's right. elaborate on this. So it was a Tibetan mastiff, which were used by um, the communities in Tibet to guard their herds. They're real protective, but they're fucking massive. Right. Um, big coat, and they're actually seen as a sign of prestige in China, I believe. Um, Strange. Yeah. I'm and not even going to give that as an interesting fact. Pardon me? Because it's too confusing. Why would someone pay that much for a dog? You got another fact. Replace that fact. Oh, man. You can see me to come up with facts off the top of my head. I'm just going to start making shit up. Okay, here's a good fact. You should always... That's, that's not already, it's already not a fact, because I've said you should. It's a fact that if you update your Apple stuff within the first three weeks that it asks you to update it, everything gets fucked. How about that? Yeah, goddamn, I, I love the Wow, that's an interesting fact. If you look at my email inbox at the minute, it has around eight different emails from Apple of me trying to restore my Apple ID. It's a fucking nightmare. Oh, it's absolutely nightmare. I, in fact, don't update my stuff until it starts breaking. That makes sense to it. stops yeah. working. I don't update it. I think once I've got through that problem, I actually don't mind this new iMessage. You get to, like, draw shit and send GIFs. Yeah, my missus has been doing that. But, I'm a big fan um, of GIFs. Yeah. Do you pronounce it GIF or GIF? I'll be honest, mate. Doesn't have a conversation very much for me. Well, what do you think? I say GIF. All right, there you go. Because if it was... What was the other one? SIF, do you say? GIF. GIF. Then I'd be with J. No, GIF. Yeah, I'd be with J. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I, I I actually have never said the word GIF out loud for a good couple of years, or I don't know when the last. I don't know if I ever actually have because why would you say it? I uh, yeah, like I say, mate, it doesn't come from conversation much. <laughs> no. Nah. Anyway, that guy's dick was huge. <laughs> oh, it's flattering. Catch you out. Right, I'm going to start the timer now, which is already late, but we've got 20 minutes to talk about special strength exercises and how they can help us as rugby players, what the bloody hell they are, um, and how people often get this a lot wrong, which brings me on to the question that I was going to ask you. I told you I was going to ask you a question, didn't I? You ready? You did, mate. You've got two options. What's more annoying? This is asked to me by Rich on Facebook. So, Instagram videos of people doing insanely quick SAQ ladders, or good-looking hot chicks doing football skills? What kind of football skills? Uh, it doesn't specifically say in the questions. Yeah, football skills. Football skills is more annoying from chicks? Yeah. 
Because they're just because um, you're not really watching it because of skills. These skills aren't really involving anything. Like they're not people actually playing football. They're just doing it on a field for bands. Yeah. No, nah, I opposite. I'm, I'm I, I, I answer the opposite. Go. Have you seen this guy that's almost gone viral with his quick feet? How quick he runs ladders? No. Can't say how mate. Okay, I'll send my, it to you. My, I'll put it in the show. Actually, I'm not going to put it in the show notes because it's useless. Um, it's anyway, this guy, it's like he's... BJ. What? So my Instagram is almost 100% BJJ. Oh, okay. Um, I'll send you the video now, actually, so we can watch it. So let me just pause this pod, and then you'll watch it, and then we'll get back. Okay, so we're back, and Alex is watching it now. What do you think of this guy, Alex? Pretty quick feet, isn't he? He's good, got good insanely program, Good program feet. patterns. Yeah. So... My question to you is, why is he not in the NFL or playing professional sports? Well, he looks like he weighs about 180 for a start. Yeah. Um, is it also not because he's wasting all of his time learning this fucking yeah. drill to make sure he does it really he's fast? Just le- he's just learning a pattern by the field. Like, there's, there's a time and a place for like pattern drills like this, but it's not the same as trying to do it in a game. Yeah, especially when it, you yeah. see these guys and they run around a cone and they like keep facing the cone and they shuffle their feet really quickly. It's, like, pointless. Yeah, we'll have to get Speedy on to talk about this as well. Speedy's uh, got some interesting opinions on this. On ladder work? Yeah. yeah SAQ that. stuff in general, actually. But yeah, he does. On ladder work, yeah. There's, a, there's definitely a time and a place for ladder work. But mm-hmm. I would say you can meet the fastest people on a rugby pitch and they could never have touched a ladder in their life. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, anyway... That aside, that sort of leads us on to special strength and specialist exercises because what we mean by this is, <clears throat> I hate to use the word functional. Let's change it then. Yeah. So, because it's, cause it's not, but it's what people will think when they say functional because they're like, oh, this is uh, rugby specific, it's functional. And this has been bastardized by people that just sit on a Swiss ball and do everything on a Swiss ball. So, here we go. The idea of special strength came from Berkashansky. Yes. Okay. And the way he kind of defined it is special strength is any strength you can apply in your sport, which is a super way. That's such an amazing way of putting it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, So So we've spoken about this many a time before um, in the injuries podcast, in a few of the podcasts where we said, it doesn't matter if how much you can bench, if your bench performance goes up 20 kilos, does that mean you necessarily improve in your sport? We don't know, unless. But if you prov- if you perform better at special strength exercises, we know that that's going to make you a better rugby player. Yeah, Sweet. Yeah, absolutely. We can. Um, who's a good guy to look at about this is Antoli Bondarchuk. He. Um, if if you guys happen to read around this kind of information, <laughs> I don't think. Yeah. Uh, Fuck you. You know, if you go to that website I sent you a link for, click on the Flintstone snoring, that's what you're looking for. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, but let's talk about it. So um, a lot of people want to do special strength exercises all the time. Some people want to do special strength exercises none of the time. Um, should we first discuss when the best time to do special strength exercises is? Yeah, why not? So this brings us back to our programming again, um, as it always seems to. Yeah. Away from season, you're looking for more general stuff. In season, you're looking for or coming up to season, and in season, you're looking for more specific stuff. Yeah. I so agree special with that. special strength comes comes under the sports specific. Yeah, and the reason that we don't just stick with special strength stuff all the time, we say, oh, this is a sports specific workout. Do it all the time," is because. Yes, they're very good at demonstrating your strength or, sh- or improving your strength on the field, but they're not so great at just um, improving your general strength and your general like hyper- hypertrophy, right? Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, you're, that's you're better fair. off rather than doing like landmine presses or something to try and get better, bigger shoulders or a bigger chest. You're better off probably doing some sort of bench press and flies and stuff, right? Yeah, and. Um I actually did a, a cycle with one group trying to use uh, landmine presses as a primary strength exercise. Just doesn't work. It's yeah. a fucking ball ache. 
Interesting. But yeah, so the point is, is that we do it in an order so there's a, there's a unique flow to it. So we can try and, so from a rugby perspective, I think it comes in stages. So first off, your first stage is to try and get a bigger muscle. Then you're going to try and teach that bigger muscle to, or get that bigger muscle stronger. And then you're going to teach that muscle to apply that strength to help you in rugby by using special strength exercises. That would be the way I'd flow it. And yeah, so, that's one way of doing it, sure. And that's, so you'd, that's your general kind of yeah. linear block periodization deal. Yeah, and that's not going to apply to everyone, but that's how you can look at it. So that's why you can't do one thing for every single workout ever. You've got to cover your bases. Same, same thing as we discussed with movement. The more you can get a good general strength work done, the, the more scope there is to apply then that to your sport. Yeah. Or to rugby for us. Yeah, I think that's fair. Cool. Um, there's certain things you need to realise about special strength exercises and how they apply. Um, so we, if we said, um, okay, we're going to look at throwers here because I've got more information about throwers than I do about rugby. Right. Because um, we're researching it. We, we know for a fact that if you get a stronger squat, you're going to be able to throw further if you're an elite thrower. Mm-hmm. Um, pressing strength actually is more beneficial for non elite throwers. But the point is, we know that we consider a squat a special exercise for throwers. Mm-hmm. If it's done at a speed which is um, relevant to throwing. Right. So, so elaborate on and, that a little bit more. Okay, so we can, we can tie that in with um, changing weights on a shot. So if you're a shot putter, mm-hmm. Sometimes you might want to use a heavier shot put. Right. So the connection there is the speed of the squat should be a similar speed to the throw. Does that make sense? Right, so, yeah. So wh- however many meters a second it is, I'd imagine it's upwards of 0.6 meters a second. But yeah. the shot, the heavier shot, is the same movement, but a slower speed. Because obviously gotcha. you've got that force, it's much times acceleration. Yeah? Mm-hmm. So more force means a slower acceleration. Um, so you've got these different variables which need to be matched with the ex- with the movement in sport. Right. Does that make sense? Yes. Sure. Yes. Okay. Cool. So. So when we come to wait, let me let me do this. When we come to rugby, mm-hmm. we need to figure out what exercises correlate best with an increased performance in rugby. Beautiful. And those those would be our spe- special strength exercises. Yeah. So we've got a general ones, so obviously, um, and when we say special strength, we're not actually, like, that's anything other than playing rugby itself. Yeah. When we talk about special more, exercises. Uh, special, yeah. So anything that's as close as we can get, but we've adapted it somehow to make it easier to, so that you can get better. Not necessarily yeah. easier, but different, right? So I would include scrimmaging in... Uh in special exercises as well, I think. Scrimmaging? Um, Scrimmaging. Like fighter games. Oh, you would? Uh, yeah, I would. Actually, okay. I think anything which isn't the actual sport. Okay, yeah, yeah. So, practice. Yeah. We're talking about practice. I'm glad you got that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, it's here. Practice? We're talking about practice? <laughs> I was actually yeah. referring to Alan Iverson. But anyway, um, so... What we've got to identify is if we can do a movement and build that strength and then build into that power, that's going to get us to be a better rugby player doing these different movements, right? Because everything pretty much in rugby is going to be powerful, right? You hope so, yep. So what I like to do for... So we can do sprinting and then we'll Mm -hmm. talk about different um, examples of different other movements that we can do for rugby players. But sprinting's a real basic one, so you've got as general as you can get, you've got what, deadlifts and hip thrust and stuff, right? So building up lower body strength. Mm-hmm. Then to get it more specific, what we can do is load up a, a sled and we're gonna push that. And what we've gotta make sure that we do is that that sled is heavy enough that we can get into correct movement patterns. So. We want to use this not only to get us stronger and powerful, 
but we want to use this to make sure that we use correct sprinting mechanics so we can sprint in the best position possible quickly, so that we can get faster. Quickly talk to us about the sprint mechanics, mate. Huh? Quickly talk to us about sprint mechanics. You, you look, you're better than me at this. Things, huh? uh, positional wide and sprint mechanics, what they look like. So we want to keep a good forward lean well obviously there's there's two different phases of sprint mechanics as well so we're looking at acceleration we're looking at acceleration acceleration is more area and it's one starting yes. acceleration so you've got a good forward lean is number one then we want a good positive shin angle describe so every 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 time we strike the ground we want to strike it through our toes and have our shins at what at what degrees would you say Alex? not our toes like, yeah our shins yeah, I'm, I'm probably going for uh, up to 45 degree from the knee. Yeah, you really want to lean that shin as far forward as possible as you drive up. Yeah. And then you want to try and reach triple extension, so up onto your toes, straight and knee, and your hip should be straight, which is where one of the positions that I fail in, because my hips still end up being flexed when I, when I accelerate. I'll do it, okay. Yeah, so, so what that's something... Is a back triple extension. Yeah. Exactly. Is, so, so now we've tied it into something. Yeah. Right. So then what we do is we use the sled to push it and we try and get strength and get used to doing those mechanics. And what we've done by loading up the sled is we've slowed the movement down. If I try and learn the movement at real ridiculously high speed, it's going to be much harder and probably never ever going to get it right. Yeah. Correct. I can do that. Then. What I'll do, this is, this is where some, and a lot of special strength exercises actually differ from you most. We can progress this exercise by lightening the load. Because what so that means then is I'm going to teach myself, yeah. go ahead. So you're increasing the amplitude there, but lowering the intensity. Mm -hmm. So basically I'm going to get this movement faster. So I've learned the mechanics, now I need to apply these mechanics faster. I've got the strength from doing the general stuff. I've learned the mechanics. Now I need to make these mechanics powerful using the strength. So we can do a sled, like dragging a sled is a better way of doing that. Um, and we can have a lighter load and still get a good speed. Right? Yeah, I'd agree with that. And then my final one is just basic sprinting, but then with s different stimulus. So I'm sprinting and avoiding different cones or avoiding tacklers or something like that where you've manipulated now that I've got to not only produce the mechanics at speed, but I've got to react to something um, in a game specific way. Yeah, so you're introducing a, almost a, a cognitive element. You make people think while they're doing it. Yeah. So and the idea the then is that you've got the mechanics you in place, you've got the strength in place, and your focus is more on reacting to whatever, like, say you, you can do, and I think everyone's seen this done, where you sprint to a cone and then all there is is someone standing in front of that cone and they're going to point to a different direction. You're going to step off and run in, each di in either whichever direction the guy points, right? Mm -hmm. So you're more thinking about which way is he going to point rather than how am I sprinting, how does my sprinting look? And if your sprinting still looks great, then you've progressed and you're going to get better. If your sprinting looks not like it should have done, like it ha you've been practicing with the sled, then you need to take it down a notch, keep practicing with the sled until you've got those mechanics down. Because otherwise we're not improving our performance. Cool, that makes sense. So you would say that sprinting is a special exercise for rugby? Yeah. So we can say you'll be a better rugby player if you improve your sprint, only your sprint strength? Um, pretty much, yes. Would you agree? Cool. No, Ooh. kind of. I would say that what we want to do is improve our acceleration. Oh. Yeah. You see right. what I'm saying? Like, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not trying to be a dick about this. No, no. I'm being a dick about You're right. They're, well, as we said, they're two different phases. Yeah. So, I think because rugby is played in like a, or like a 10 by 10 meter box in general. Yeah, if, I'd say if you're a winger or a fullback, potentially an eight that covers. Yeah, if you And back, potentially yeah. a centre, but probably not. Then top end sprint speed is actually something that you want to get better at that will yeah. improve your performance so now what we've got to is position specific uh stuff so we can't just say oh this is rugby specific because outside of a pass and probably rucks but it's more important for forwards to be better at rucks than it is for backs right mm -hmm. 
Yep. So outside of like a, f a few general movements, there are definitely different focuses that each player needs to have. So I think that you should only really focus on what one to three different roles to try and improve on. Yeah, I think that's fair. If you then start to try and improve on about eight different roles, that's just too much mechanics for your body to learn and it's going to be really, really difficult. I'm going to bring you back onto, onto task now, mate. So, we've said that some kind of locomotion, so either a sprint or acceleration, is a primary special exercise called rugby. Right. Uh, be, it, be it a straight line sprint or a sprint with change in direction, right. like agility or, or acceleration, doesn't matter what it is, some kind of sprint movement. Mm -hmm. I'm actually of the thought that as long as you're strengthening the muscles that are relevant for straight line sprinting, you can take care of the muscles which are responsible for change of direction in the gym. Um, so any other exercises which you would say are almost always going to be used for special strength in rugby? Um, a ruck clear out with a medicine ball. Oh, interesting. So that's very, that's very specific, very rugby specific there. Yeah. How would you use that? So the, so we'll go in reverse order from what I just did with a sprint, right? Bearing in mind we've got three and a half minutes left of my time, and we're going to do it this time, I reckon. Um, this can only really be replicated with a medicine ball, I think. So if you dip as if you're going to do... So from a standing start with the medicine ball overhead, you're then going to dip into almost like a... Uh, kettlebell yep. swing position. Yep. And then from there, you're going to launch the medicine ball forward as hard as you can. And you're actually going to go flying forward, so it's a good idea to put Matt in front of you. Um, hopefully, by the time I post this podcast, I'll put a link up to it. There'll be an so Instagram video. So what we're saying video. is the forward toss is, is how we describe yeah. that, yeah? Cool. And specifically, you're... with that swing motion, because that is faster than if we were just to do a forward chest pass. Okay, let's let's break that down quickly and we'll say there's three levels to this, okay? Right. You have doing the forward toss from the ball between your legs, mm -hmm. so there's no eccentric loading. Yep. You have a small swing, yep. so there's a little bit of eccentric loading, and you have that big swing which you were talking about, okay? That's yep. three levels you can work to to get it done. Mm -hmm. Cool. Next bit. Um, and then, so going down from that, you can do simple, that, now it gets into a bit more general rather than special strength. So we can do anything that features triple extension, um, generally under a little bit of load. So I don't mind power cleans for this, um, although that's a bit different because we're applying the force vertically. So maybe we're better off doing your landmines. Um, I haven't what got this written. What would you think about a banded test force win? Yep. That would be a real good one. Yeah, I like that one. And then, as I say, and then we go a bit more general, and we've got lower body strength, core strength, as we've discussed before. So specifically, we'd go something more like a deadlift, more of a hinge and a yeah. knee dominant movement. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'd agree with that. Cool. I think any hinging movement is, is pretty vital for rugby. I think it's probably more important to be good at a hinge than it is to be good at a knee dominant movement. Yeah. So what we're trying to say here is for special strength stuff, rather than progressing it by simply adding more weight, you're going to progress it by making it more and more specific and probably, I think, pretty much 100% faster. Yeah. So, so you probably lighten the load as you go through. So I'd break all of what we said down into the fact that you need to look at what movements are relevant to rugby or your okay, sport. Okay, let's, let's do this. Let's go through. Yeah. We've got, what, 30 yeah. seconds left on the timer, so we're going to yeah. run over. Damn it. I mean, I'm going to really right. break this down, mate, okay? Look at what sports are relevant or what movements are relevant to your sport. Okay, figure them out. Which is rugby. Then you need to, then you need to look at what speed they're done at mm -hmm. and what angles they're done at. Yeah. Your special strength movements will, will reflect the speed or the angle or the amplitude of the movement. Okay. From there, you just you figure out what movements are then going to build those movements up. Yeah. So that's your special movements, that's your general general movements, all yeah. thought out. Yeah. Your general movement, yeah. Which muscle groups are doing it? Which way the movement goes? Right. So now we know what we need to get big, bigger and stronger. Then we know how to move it faster and etc. Yeah. So, 
Let's think. Let's let's name two roles for each position real quick, so that we can give people stuff that they can work on. Props. Now you name one, then I'll name one. What do you mean roles? Um, so if we're looking at special strength, what okay, what a, okay, well, a special good. role that a so, prop needs to do? Yeah. So in in propping, your your main role is to one lift and line out. And to provide a solid base for the scrum. Right. So, so we're look at line out we've lifting. got two there. So line out lifting and scrum and push. Scrum it push. used to be probably it's different now from what it was because the scrum engaged. There's no hit anymore. So it's no. all about that um, isometric strength, really. Yeah. Continue with isometric strength. There's also like a chase there as well. But yeah. We look at isometric strength. Hookers. I think a hooker is essentially a, a flank who's fat, so um, I'd say that breakdown work's really important for hookers, and again, the isometric strength in the scrum. Yeah, and obviously a line-out throw as well. Yeah. I, mm. So there are hookers that need to... So this it's difficult, but that one can only really be replicated by having... like You've you got your general strength of your core stuff, but then and your, obviously, shoulder strength. But then you can make that special by using medicine balls and stuff. In terms of line-up throws, I think as long as you've got the shoulder mobility to, to get your shoulder, like to get a throw action right, mm -hmm. and the, the core strength to be able to generate or to yeah. harness the power, everything else is... Uh, but I think the stronger you are as a thrower, um, the less fatigued you get throughout a game, the less fatigue affects you throughout a game, so you can continue to throw good oh. for 80 minutes. I don't know how much how much leg strength there is in, in line-out throwing, but... We don't have to say leg strength. Let's move on. All right. Second row, so line-out jumping, obviously. Yep, so that's a vertical jump. Yep. And again, that's scrummaging. Mm-hmm. Scrummaging or, or ruck clearing. I think second rows have probably hit more rucks than any other position. Yep, I do, yeah. And then back row... You could do any of the things that we've already discussed, uh, except obviously line out yeah. throwing. Um, yeah. But also, because they're a bit, like, depend these, and as we start to get into backs as well and, and the back row, these are where it becomes player specific. So, yeah, you need to get your needs up. Needs I'll talk more on this when we get to centers. But yeah, for the back row, whatever you need. So, we've got ruck in, not necessarily scrummaging, line out jumping can be crucial for some. Tackling. Yeah, tackling, carrying, so carrying yeah. power, etc. Um, scrum Back. off and fly off, obviously number one is going to be passing. Yeah, so that's rotational strength there. Yeah. Uh, I'd say, I know it's not particularly a special strength, but an aerobic ability would be good for that. Yeah, I'd also say, um, like lateral acceleration for a scrum off. Yep. So if you because if you can push off of one leg you're going to pass better off the ground and then for a fly half acceleration is probably a, a something that they need to have as well right look up food and barrett yeah no that Bird dude's just fast best, fly half in the world. best acceleration in the world. he's just so fast right centers again this is where we probably get this is the, probably the most player specific position we can get where we can change these things but because you can have a 12 such as jamie roberts or you can have a 12 such as uh, Carl Eastman. Well, I'd say the one thing that both of them would need is acceleration. Yep. Because even though they're going to accelerate for different reasons, Jamie Roberts will accelerate into contact, mm -hmm. Eastman might accelerate out of contact. But I'd say... As soon as it accelerates. Um, yeah, so like a big basher is going to have... And these are two different special strength areas that you can work on. Don't think that... Oh, acceleration, that's just SAQ. I'll get on and do some ladders like that quick lad. No, if you're doing acceleration, there is the difference between acceleration, like straight forward running and agility. So I think, you know, if you're one that wants to work on your step, that's not the same thing as acceleration. Well, that was, should be taken about care of that its own. Acceleration, um, agility would be the other one that changed the direction. Yeah, change of direction is completely different and needs to be worked different. Yeah, agreed. That was a good rant. Um, and then tackling as well, I guess, for centres. Yeah. And then we've got to our wings and our full-backs. Um, I'd say, obviously, we've already discussed this, but the wing top-end speed is key. 
and then we've got the accelerate so that's a new one and then we've got acceleration footwork um anything else alex yeah i think uh back we need to be able to tackle yeah so um, that, no, I'm pretty good. Reaction agility. Good. I guess, I guess a fullback also uh, catching a high ball is important. So yeah, if you can goes, jump high goes, and control yeah. that jump really well, I, I'd put it under a skill rather than a uh, special strength. Though. No, I think the higher you can ca- jump, the more control you can be. You can have to catch the ball. Yeah, that's fair. So, yeah. All right. So whatever your position is, we've discussed what you need to work on. Figure out how to build the muscles or ask us for help you were always available tj.strength instagram facebook twitter youtube you're such a social media whore i'm not really is that um, youtubes at collision and combat on instagram and facebook cool um is there any way people can get in contact with you just through there they just message you yeah, yeah they can send me a message and either one if you feel like you want to be trained for these special strength, get in touch. We do offer coaching. Um, Alex, are you still doing any of the lower stuff, like cheaper than coaching, or is it just coaching? Most of just coaching right now, mate, to be honest. No worries. That's all right. Cool. Uh, um, and then by this time this podcast that comes out, I'm hoping that we have developed the new Rubber Dump Academy where we've got a 12-week cycle <clears throat> for rugby players that want to gain muscle so check that out the link will be in the description if not there'll be a link for like a sign up list so you can get told as soon as we release that um, any closing notes Alex yeah don't just worry about the special strength exercises worry about the exercises just make the special strength exercises better so just dig a little bit deeper than most people would do just go like one of here you fuckers, video, you yeah. fuckers. <laughs> Sorry. Excellent. <laughs> but that's a good point. Make sure when you're learning these, because one thing I haven't discussed, and it comes up because of CrossFit. Um, if you're doing special strength work, make sure you take the time to rest, take the time to work on moving properly. If you're going around and doing all this stuff that says, oh, this is sport specific, so you've got a 30 second station of rut clearing out, and then you've got a 30 second station of um, I don't know, snatches and then a 30 second of uh, toes to bar and you're saying this is all specific but it's not because you're knackered you want to be fresh when you're working most of these this right? comes back to that amplitude, intensity and movement deal that I spoke about before mm-hmm. that has to affect one of those three or two is three for it to really be effective yeah, I guess what we can say is the more general you get the less you have to worry about it but if you're doing like the top end special strength stuff, that can only be done a few times a week at most. And you need to like have a solid rest and make sure the movement is perfect. Whereas once you get a bit general, yes, you want to make sure the movement is perfect, but it's an easier movement to do. So you can you don't have to rest as much and dicta- uh, dedicate as much focus on it. You can have it as part of your warm up five days a week to do a few different general uh, special strength stuff. Right? Yeah. Just to get mechanics. Cool. All right, boys. That'll be the end. Let's see if I can find the specials. Ah, I can't. It doesn't matter. (laughs) Let's see what we've got. Now, fuck this. This is a fail. See you later, boys. Say bye, Alex. Ciao.